Hello and welcome. My name is Suze, founder of The Rockstar Advocate, and I want to thank you so much for giving me your time and attention right now. I promise to make it worthwhile. Welcome to the Music Entrepreneur Conference, and I want to thank Jalen, Rachel, and the entire World Artists United team for having me here today. As I said, my name is Suze, and as a mindset and productivity coach, I've just entered my 20th year in the music industry, and in addition to my master's in psychology, I am just finishing up my master's in social work, which makes me fairly equipped to break down some of the mindset shifts that can really help you do more with less. So listen up, all right? We are going to redefine your hustle today. Now, I want you to listen carefully to what I'm about to say. So if you're distracted, or you're on your phone, or you're checking emails, put it down for one moment. And if you take anything away from today, I want you to truly take this into your mind and digest it. All right, you ready? Your dreams aren't too big or wrong. You're just bad at basic math, okay? And I'm going to explain that in the next little while or so while we're here today to explain what I mean, all right? So hold tight. If you've got access to the downloadable workbook that I made, take that out now. If you don't have it or you'd like it later, simply DM me on Instagram. I'll give you my contact info at the end of today's session, and I'm happy to send you that. I'll send you the slides, whatever you'd like. I'm happy to um, share that all with you today. So first I want to get into what the real problem is here. All right. Why do musicians and music professionals get tired, (laughs) burn out, What keeps them from reaching their goals? Well, in my 20 years in this industry, after starting at the major labels and burning out in my mid-20s, and after learning how to live with a chronic illness, I can tell you from direct experience, as well as all of my clients and peers that I work with, I can tell you from our collective experience that the real problem is musicians and music professionals spin their wheels working around the clock. Is any of this sounding familiar yet? (laughs) to achieve their goals only to be paralyzed by overwhelm and then eventually burnout. Okay, is any of that resonating with you? I'm sure it sounds and feels familiar to many of you here today. So we're gonna work on solving that, okay? I have found that the solution is not to push harder. I know that is the instinct. I know that is what we instinctively do immediately when we feel like we're not getting there fast enough or getting to the right goal, we push harder or we toughen up, right? This, is, this isn't this is for the faint of heart. This is the music industry. We got to toughen up, have that thick skin. But the real solution is to redefine what true hustle is. And it's personal for everyone. Just like the way we define success, it's different and looks and feels different for each and every one of you. So we need to redefine what true hustle is for us individually and work smarter by leading with clarity around our goals and leveraging the resources we already have to get more done in less time and with less stress. All right, if you're still with me, if you're feeling that, if you wanna learn how to do that, you are in the right place. So here are the basic three steps that can really lead to redefining your hustle, okay? Step one, get clear on what it is you want, not what you think you should want. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that pesky comparison paralysis, okay? That thing that we say to ourselves when we set a goal, but then we go on Instagram and we see what other musicians are doing or other professionals are doing. And we think, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should be focusing on that. Or, oh, they're killing it on YouTube. I I was going to start a audio podcast, but maybe I need to be focusing on YouTube. Oh, that person just got signed to a label. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Oh, sync licensing. Somebody said they just made six figures with that. That's what I should be doing, right? No, what do you want? Start there. Don't ride the coattails of somebody else's dreams. Don't follow what somebody else is doing because it worked for them. It could work for you, even if you followed what they did to a T, and even if it did work out just the way it worked out for them, which is unlikely. But even if that were the case, if it's not what you want, none of that matters. And that's why we burn out. 
That's why we hate, end up hating what we do and we become masochists, right? We want to love what we do. We want to feel inspired. We want to be feel pumped up. It depletes our energy when we are not in alignment with our desires and our needs, okay? Step two is to get a pen and paper and map everything out. List it, mind dump it, mind map it. Everything that takes up space in your life, not just your career, okay? So often we plan and we just think about what our goals are for our careers and, okay, I got this, this, that, and this to do. All right, I'll do it tomorrow. And we're not taking into consideration, oh, I, I have other responsibilities outside my career, right? We get caught up in the planning and in the chasing the goals. So this is where that math comes in, okay? That basic math that trips us all up. We think we have 24 hours in a day, right? We've been told that our whole lives, right? The sky is blue and you have 24 hours in a day. But we don't have 24 hours in a day. And we certainly don't have the same 24 hours as Beyonce. Don't even get me started on that. That could be a whole presentation in and of itself. You do not have the same 24 hours as other people with other means. Okay, and stop thinking in 24, okay? Eight are used for sleeping, and even if you're not sleeping, you should certainly not be working, all right? Take away all the things that, you know, need to get done. Laundry, dishes, grocery food shopping, going to the bathroom, eating at some point, walking your dog, driving to and from wherever you need to go, taking public transportation, all that stuff takes time. All right, so let's just say generously we have eight hours, right? An eight hour work day. Well, it's not really eight hours of pure focused work. At best, okay, at best we have four hours every day to make an impact. Okay, when we take away the distractions, when we take away life happening, meaning meetings running late, uh, getting stuck in traffic, not feeling well, getting, you know, having tech issues, all of that stuff takes up time that we don't plan for. So we have to shift the way we think, think in four hour days, not 24 hour days. It will completely change your life. Just this one thing. If, if you do one thing, learn one lesson from this, think in four hours, not 24, and it will be a game changer, I guarantee you. Now, step three is to set boundaries around your time energy, and resources. And most importantly, it's not just important to set the boundaries. What's most important is to honor the boundaries in order to have freedom to reach your goals on your terms. Now, many of you are sitting there thinking, I've got kids. I've got a day job. I am, I'm in a band and I, I'm, I'm responsible and tied to other people's commitments. I can't just set boundaries and and, and make declarations and do whatever it is I wanna do. You have more control than you think. And the funny thing is we ha the ways we think we have control, we don't. Like we think we can control our day, we can't. We think we can't control our boundaries and our limitations and how we, what we say yes or no to, but we actually can. So that's another kind of shift that needs to happen how many hours we have in our day, and what we truly have control over. When people say, well, you don't have as much control as you think, and then we say, oh my goodness, well, I don't have any control. That's not true. You don't have as much control as you think in the places you think you have it. But you actually have more control in the places that you assume you don't have it. All right? So think about that. Really think about the areas of your life where you've kind of given up control, but you can really take it back. And then think about the areas in your life where you assume you have control or you like to think you have control, but you don't have control, right? Like what you're getting your kids for Christmas. You don't really have control over that, right? You're going to take one look at their faces and you're going to figure out how to get them what they want. They control that, but you also control more than you think you do when it comes to how and when you spend your time and energy. Parkinson's law, okay? Don't fret that you only have four hours in the day at best to work towards your dreams and achieve your goals because our guy Parkinson has your back.
back. All right, Parkinson's law teaches us this, okay? It has nothing to do with Parkinson's disease. Two separate things here. <laughs> Parkinson's law tells us work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Again, we're going back to that math part that a lot of us get tripped up on. Now, think of a tube of toothpaste, okay? When you get a brand new tube of toothpaste, you're putting that big fat wad of toothpaste on your toothbrush, just like they show you in the Crest commercials. But then when you get really down to the itty bitty bit of it before you throw that tube of toothpaste out, you're squeezing the last bit of toothpaste and you're still gonna brush your teeth and you're still gonna achieve your goal of having a clean mouth. You don't have that wad of toothpaste. You didn't need the wad of toothpaste. You just needed enough toothpaste, okay? You just need enough time to get things done. So rather than say, I'm going to do a blog post by the end of the week. No, decide when you're going to do the blog post and give yourself 20 to 30 minutes to do it. Now, when you first try this, you're gonna get stuck with writer's block, you're gonna procrastinate, that 20 or 30 minutes is gonna be up and you're gonna say, I still don't have this blog post done. But you're gonna train yourself, this is part of the discipline. Work with Parkinson's Law, work with timers, give yourself less time and focus on what matters. I see new parents all the time, brand new parents who don't get any sleep and yet they manage to, I've seen parents who go back to school, who are gaining promotions and killing it at their job. It's difficult, but when they're juggling kids and work and all this stuff, maybe they don't see their friends as much for that period of time, but guess what? it becomes real clear to them real fast out of necessity what is the most important stuff to do. I watched my mom go back to college when I was three years old. She finished her degree. She worked a full-time job. She looked after me and my brother. She got it done. Why? Because she didn't work 24 seven and never sleep or else she wouldn't be able to function. That's not sustainable, but she didn't waste time. We waste so much time, but when we limit the time we have, when we think in four hours, you're wasting time because in the back of your brain, there's 24 hours, I have 24 hours. And then the day is up and your list of 20 things to get done in those 24 hours, you get two things done and you feel like crap and you feel like a failure. Think in four hour days, get four hours of focused intentional work done. It doesn't have to be all in a row but get the summation of four hours of focused work done in a day. Get the three major most important things or one gigantic important thing done that day and you will feel like a winner. Now you're going into the next day feeling like a winner because you are. You're doing what needs to get done. We fill our days with white noise and stuff that does not need to get done. Think about Parkinson's law and not only limit the time you have, but think about well, if I only have this much time, you're st going to start to be able to pick out on your list the most important and urgent things on that list. You're gonna stop getting all consumed by all the white noise that's out there. So here's mistake number one, all right? Here are the biggest mistakes I see happen when planning or scheduling tasks. Number one is we don't break our goals down enough to truly see all the pieces. And that, in, and in not doing that, we're not able to set realistic deadlines or even understand what our next steps are. So if you say, I'm building a YouTube channel or I'm gonna post a YouTube video, what does that mean? And so we put it off and we put it off and we put it off because our brain can't digest vagueness. It runs from vagueness. Animals run when they don't know what's in front of them. And so we mentally run and energetically run from things on our list that are too vague. And when they're bigger and we haven't broken them down, again, we give ourselves these bigger deadlines and more far out deadlines. And we're not thinking about Parkinson's law. You wanna give yourself shorter deadlines, less time to get things done. But you also wanna break down your tasks into what I call micro tasks so that you can really see what exactly is coming next. It's like 
putting on the lights when you walk into a dark room. You can, doesn't matter how much furniture or obstacles might be in your way, if you can see to the other side of that room, you know what your next, literal, literally your next step is going to be because you can see it. So break that vague stuff down on your list. If you're sitting there just stumped, it means you haven't broken it down quite enough. And mistake number two. Now, again, if you're distracted right now, put the phones down, close out the other tabs, listen up. Okay, this might be the most important thing I say. I know I've already said that three times, but really this is, this is super important. Mistake number two is we plan for the best and expect the worst when we need to plan for the worst and ex expect the best. Now, here's what I mean by that. Again, going back to we think in 24 hours. We plan as if we can control our day. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. You're thinking about tomorrow. You want, you're feeling good. You're feeling pumped about tomorrow. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get sleep. I'm gonna, I'm, I want this really badly, so I'm going to wake up super pumped tomorrow. And I'm going to get A, B, and C done before the, even the sun comes up. Then I'm going to have a great breakfast. And I'm going to do this and do that. It only takes me 20 minutes to get to work. So I'm going to give myself 25 minutes and just in case. And then I'm going to get to work. and do, Right? And then your alarm goes off. You are exhausted. You might want what you want. But your body is like, I did not get to rest enough. So now you start the morning groggy. You're going a little slow. You're not doing anything before the sun rises. Now you're already like, oh, I overslept. You didn't oversleep. You got the sleep you needed. But you feel like you overslept, so you're already starting out the day feeling like a jerk. Then you give yourself 25 minutes to do a 20-minute commute when really there's traffic or there was an accident on the road or the train you know, needed to stop or got stuck at a station, and it really took you 40 minutes to get to work then a meeting ran late, then this, that, and the other thing. You come home, you're exhausted, not just because of the things that should actually exhaust you, but because of all the tenseness and the frustration and the annoyance at yourself and at the world. We need to plan in worst case scenarios. If you think in four hour days, you look at your schedule and say, okay, 20 minute commute, let's face it, it's gonna be a 40 to 45 minute commute. Let me buffer out my travel time. Get that on the calendar. I want to wake up early tomorrow. I'm going to do my best. But the last three days, I really haven't been. I've had a lot on my plate. My body is feeling it. You know what? I'm going to aim for 7 a.m., not 5 a.m., and I'm going to do the best I can. And while I'm eating breakfast, I'm going to listen to a podcast episode that I've been wanting to listen to and try to take that in and have some me time. Or I'm going to take 10 minutes to journal. Okay, but I also know I only have like 20 minutes before I need to be out the door. So maybe I make that journaling time five minutes just in case. All right, because if I'm running late and I think to myself, well, I have to have 10 minutes to journal. No, have, be flexible there. Do you have five minutes? Do you have three minutes? Figure out, this is what's working smarter is all about. Figure out where you can navigate the expected probable hurdles that you're going to face. We always expect the worst, right? We apply for a job or we pitch to um, get press or we go to do a performance and we're like, oh my God, this is going to be awful. Oh God, I hope I don't suck. Oh, please let me get through this. I need to get through this, right? We just expect the worst. We need to expect the best. That's going to keep our energy high. It's going to make us feel motivated because the future can go either way. We don't know what's going to happen. But if we can expect the best, and you'll do that more often when you've realized that you're able to have more time in your day for what matters, when we're able to do that, we say to ourselves, wow, I really did do really well. This was amazing. And our energy is high and we're motivated. So it's a domino effect. Plan for the worst and expect the best. All right? Sit on that. <laughs> so here are some ways we can redefine our hustle. All right? These are just three examples, but the possibilities are endless. 
I challenge you to use the notes page, the last page in this workbook, to jot down ways that you can redefine your hustle and feel free to DM me or email me later with your ideas or what you came up with. All right, and I'll give, I'll give you that information a bit later. So the first way we can do it is say no more often. That's gonna allow us to protect our self-care at all costs. Define balance in our lives, just like we define hustle and define success for ourselves. Work-life balance looks different for everyone. How does it look and feel for you? We don't always reach that balance, but it's our guiding light, it's our North Star to help us slow down and be intentional. Because if we know what the ultimate balance looks like for us, we can work at attaining it. Another way is to niche down. Too many of us are out there trying to win everybody over and offer people all the services and all of the things and be every genre of music and apply to every conference or festival out there. Okay, the riches are in the niches, my friends. Turn people off. Turn them off. Get them to say, oh, I don't like you, or that's not my type of music. Good, get out of my way, all right? And define who you do serve and why you serve them. Okay, there is no I in hustle. So I've given you the steps and the ways you can redefine your hustle, and now here is the structure. Okay, first we start with accountability. This is the exact reason I created my Rockstar Slackers program, to help music entrepreneurs stay committed to and clear on their path. Okay, the American Society of Training and Development found that you have a 65% chance of completing your goal if you have and if you have a specific accountability appointment. So if you've got that buddy in mind, all right? First, you have a 65% chance of completing your goal if you commit to it to the universe or to someone specific. And if you have an actual accountability appointment with that person, you will increase your chances of success to up to 95%. It's usually about 40 to 30% chance of completing those new year resolutions if you do it by yourself. Get an accountability buddy, you have a 65% chance of completing that goal. Make meetings, regular meetings and check-ins with that accountability buddy, you've now raised your chances to 95% of completing that goal and having success. Okay, so get an accountability buddy. If you don't have one, I've got my Rockstar Slackers program developed specifically for this, okay? It's weekly accountability. And if you can find somebody to do it, if you can find a peer or a friend, somebody that's also working towards something, it will be a game changer. The next thing is systems, okay? I could go on and on about systems all day long. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. This is what allows you to work smarter. All right, I've got a whole page of these on my website, so feel free to DM me and I'll send you the link to check them all out. Some are free, some are not. Some I'm, a, I'm an affiliate for, some I'm just a major fan of. But the systems allow you to automate, streamline, and improve your client, customer, or fan experience while saving you time, energy, and resources. Okay, and below are just some of the ones that I use on a daily basis, like Canva, Google Drive, plan to plan out my social media, Shopify, Slack, HoneyBook. Those are like my holy grails of running my business. I'd be lost without them. Daily routines. This is the discipline that I was talking about before. The hustle is in the small, consistent steps. Okay. It's not in the go, 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 go-ness. It's in the small, consistent steps. Find clarity through your daily routine so you can begin to pick up on patterns and take advantage of your productivity rhythm. We all have our own productivity rhythm. And lastly, reflection. It's not just you, it's also about the past and future you in this journey. So work with your past and future self to ensure that you're in alignment and learning from your actions, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, I've created a Rockstar Life Planner. I've been doing this every year since 2016. We just came out with our 2022 Rockstar Life Planner. It's a weekly planner designed specifically for music professionals, anyone in the music industry. I'm giving you guys a special code just for those of you at this conference. It's, e, it's I'm sorry, it's M-E-C-2020. You can put that code in at checkout to get 20% off my planner, 
or the planner bundle, which comes with stickers, monthly tabs, time blocking markers, an end of day notepad for reflection and more. Okay, so you can use this code till the very end of December or while supplies last. All right, so just something to say thank you all for being here with me and for being passionate about redefining your hustle. Now, before I go, you've got a whole conference ahead of you. So how can you conference hustle? All right, how can you apply this new sense of hustle here today and throughout the rest of this conference? First, stay present. It moves fast, but take notes on what you can, but more importantly, listen, and you will absorb more than you think. Don't get lost in the minutia. Secondly, filter what you learn. Does what's being said apply to you? Maybe I've said something here today that doesn't work for you. That's okay. It's okay to disagree and learn what does work for you. Take the pieces that work for you and keep moving. And connect on a human level. You're going to have chances to network with a bunch of people, network with each other. Don't come out the gate promoting what you offer. Make a real connection. And you'll have that person in your corner way beyond this event. All right? So ask questions, listen actively, and make your own choices. If you want to keep the redefining going, if you want to plan out your 2022, before I go, I want to invite you to keep redefining your hustle with me for free at this year's Planchella. Okay, it's free for everybody. Feel free to share it with your friends. The link is right there on the slide. It's December 28th to the 30th, 12 to 3 p.m. Eastern, and it takes place in Slack, which is one of my systems that I mentioned. All right, we're going to cover your goals, priorities, and should proof your plan going into 2022. All right. Most importantly, whether you join me at Planchello, whether you get the planner, whether we ever work together or not, that's not what I'm concerned about. I love to connect with fellow creatives, okay? I want to make sure what I've shared with you today sticks. So connect with me and keep me posted on your progress. Ask me questions. Share your wins. Let me know what else you've learned at this conference so I can learn something too. I'm always on Instagram. So find me at Rockstar Advo. You can email me at suz, S-U-Z, at therockstaradvocate.com. And you can head on over to my site, therockstaradvocate.com, for my planner at forward slash the dash shop. Um, you can sign up for Planchella. You can schedule a free call with me to learn more. All that's on my website. You can also DM me on Instagram. I want to thank you all so much for being with me here today. Thank you for your time and attention. Jalen, Rachel, and the rest of the World Artists United team, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of the Music Entrepreneur Conference yet again. This is such a special event. You all are in for such a treat for the rest of this conference. And I wish you all a wonderful rest of 2021. Thanks so much.